When will silver hit $200? Well, a month ago on CNBC, they shared that silver is set for a terrific year and could outperform gold to hit a 10-year high. And I actually do think that that's going to happen. Uh, gold is definitely uh, doing well at the moment for all the right reasons as well. Uh, but I think silver, by the end of the year, will outperform gold. Uh, hitting a 10-year high, that would be nice. But that's not the main game. Uh, as you guys know, I'm a triple-digit silver guy based purely on the fundamentals of silver moving forward. And those fundamentals already make sense uh, from the World Silver Survey, the Silver Institute, Silver Supply in 2022, uh, 820 million ounces uh, was the supply, yet the demand actually grew 18% to 1.2 million ounces. And it is expected to increase again the demand in 2024 um, by a little bit. Uh, however, someone actually says that it's actually going to grow a lot more than that. And the deficit, the silver deficit, is only going to get worse. On that point, the Silver Institute estimates one. 1.2 billion of consumption of silver in 2023. 1.2 billion. Where's the consumption? Uh, well, the, the production is 800, uh, uh, 820,000 ounces of here. Oh, pardon me, 820 million ounces of production, and consumption is 1.2 billion in 2023. The estimate for 2024 is 1.4 billion ounces of consumption. So you've got two industries: the electric car industry and the solar panel industry, who is now consuming 30% of that world supply. Uh, and, that, and, that, and those industries weren't around you know, 10 years ago. I was going to ask you, because you saw Apple pulling away from uh, electric vehicles. I mean, does that at all impact the use of silver going forward? If others you start? Know, well, well so, so hybrids, you know, um, you know, hydrogen cars, um, a, a, any kind of electronic device, requires silver and you and you go buy a new fancy car today and you step into it and basically you're looking at a computer screen um, you, you go back 10 or 20 years and it was all buttons and, and switches and you know, quite a bit different so even a fuel combustion car consumes way more silver today than it did years ago just because of electronics so you get into the hybrids you get into hydrogen cars you know which you know a lot of people believe that's where we're going to end up uh, being uh, or going to uh, these vehicles require silver the same as an electric car. Well, but, you know, I started by talking about the price action, and I think number one question is, you know, can we finally believe this rally? Is this finally going to be the breakthrough that gold, and especially silver investors, have been waiting for, Keith? Only time will tell. Um, I, I've been doing, I've been in the mining sector for 35 years. I've been right. talking silver for 20 years, you know, when I put first Majestic together, uh, silver was five, $5. And I said at the time that I expected silver to go to its all time, its, its previous high of $50. It took 10 years to do it. It took longer than I thought, but it did get to $50. I didn't expect that it was going to go down to 12 right. after 50. Right. You know, that was crazy. And it's now been, you know, then it's gone back and forth, back and forth. And it's been stuck in this kind of 23 to $28 range for the last, right. you know, I guess, two years, uh, which in itself does not make any sense. You know, I'm a triple-digit silver guy. You know, we're you know we're mining for every one ounce of gold, seven ounces of silver, and so you do the math. You know, today gold broke through a new high, twenty-one fourteen, and closed that today, which is fantastic. It's it's dragging. It well, it will drag all commodities with it. Its silver was up seventy-five cents today to twenty-three seventy-five, but you know you do, you divide twenty-one. 14 by seven, that's where silver should be trading at. You were one of, I think you were the first to really coin triple digit silver. Absolutely. So that's still, you still, that's still the vision. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Tavi Costa just shared this chart of silver production in Mexico and Peru 
He said silver production from Mexico and Peru, the world's two largest producers, is at its lowest point in 14 years. The combined output is now down 25% from its 2016 peak levels. As gold breaks out to record levels, igniting a new bull market for precious metals, a major supply and demand mismatch is poised to drive silver prices significantly higher. And when we look at the major countries um, globally that produce silver, you've got Mexico and Peru, uh, two of the top three uh, producers of silver. And then have a look at China and Chile. Uh, both those countries are communist countries. And we could see all sorts of funny business going on there. So we could ultimately see the top four silver producing uh, countries sig significantly uh, reduce their silver output. So when can we see $200 silver or even $100 silver, triple digit silver? Um, what I want to do now is just cut to a clip uh, with a interview from about two months ago with Eric Sprott, billionaire silver investor or in mining investor, or precious metals investor, uh, talking about this exact thing. Um, but that has made for a challenging year, uh, the lying liars. What? Um, um, had, how would you summarize the year that we've had in the metals? Well, well, the one thing I would say, and and I mentioned it to you in our chat ahead of this. You know, we are, in the case of gold, we did hit new highs across yes. the board, right? mm -hmm. which to be commended. So that's great. It was unfortunate that on that Sunday night when it all happened, it blew up the next the next 12 hours, which is, of course, the old rinse repeat thing. But gold's hanging in there. It's within a hair of a closing high here. Closing high, you know, that high that we had at 2150 or whatever was not a closing high because it got bombed that day. But uh, that's done well. I think the biggest disappointment is silver, that it would still be languishing around $24, uh, knowing everything that we see in silver, including, you know, the Silver Institute coming out and saying that there was a deficit of whatever the number was, 243 million ounces in a billion ounce market. Like, how, how do you justify that, for God's sake? Uh, there's been some commentary by a group called the Silver Academy that says, you know, when the Silver Institute comes out with their 2023 uh, results in April of next year, the next day they'll print their report as what the real numbers are with silver. And I suspect that they're onto something okay. serious that there's way more consumption. When you look around at solar and uh, electric vehicles, I mean, how can there not be significantly more consumption? Particularly when you realize, and I think this is a truism now, they use twice as much silver in, a, in an ordinary panel now because they found out if you load it with more silver, you get that much more energy. And silver is not, it's not that big a cost in a solar panel. When you think of how much it takes to make it, bring it over, install it, oh my God, that silver cost is like probably not even 5% of it. So if you, you put the twice the silver in and, and, and you get, uh, you know, 50% more silver, uh, sorry, elect electrical production, it's well worth it. And that's what's happening. And there's numbers suggesting that we might be using 200 million ounces in solar now. And, you know, five years ago, or sorry, 10 years ago, we were using zero. Uh, that's, that's 200 million. That's a 20% stake of the silver market that hasn't grown in that decade in terms of production. Somehow that guy can just come in and buy it. What about the electric vehicles that didn't even exist before? All those uses that uh, are quite significant. And yet somehow, you know, we, we say that supply and demand right. somehow are staying in balance, okay? Somehow. Right. God knows, how, of course, as you and I both might imagine, it, it's staying in balance on the paper COMEX market because there's a, a guy with deep pockets can sell all the paper silver he wants and keep it under control. But I suspect that that's going to break here. And I've sort of worked on the thesis uh, that uh, Michael Oliver has a great uh, uh, market analyst who writes the uh, uh, momentum structural analysis. And of course, his suggestion is that, you know, when gold goes into a bull market, it typically goes up by six to nine times, something like that. 
And we started this one in January 15 at 1,050. So it probably goes to $8,000, it goes to $8,000. And you use the normal ratio of silver to gold. Well, silver is gonna go to 200, okay? Yeah. And I, I believe that. I believe that's what can happen here. And of course, you know, it's not that it has to go to 200 to be a winner. It can go to 50 and you're a huge winner. But yeah. I think it that chance of going there. And I think the risk here is de minimis when you see the data. So I'm a, a huge believer in in silver. I'm a, I own a lot of silver. I own silver options. Uh, I think we're going to see some fireworks here. Well, we nearly saw fireworks uh, two Sundays ago. And it got, you know, tamped down. One of the favorite words, right? Going to tamp it down. I can't believe that the com com Comex, head of the Comex, said, well, we tamped down the gold price. Right. Are you right. kidding <clears throat> you? What? I was the head it of the CFTC. Silver. It was the silver price increase, wasn't it? Yeah, when yeah. it got to 30 bucks there. Yeah. yeah. We tamped it down. Yeah, yeah. well, what are there for? You're there to tamp it down, aren't you? Well, yes, but he thinks his job is. Let's talk about price because you're right. All the physical fundamentals argue for a higher price, particularly of silver. But yet, yeah. you know, it's not so much the physical supply and demand as it is the derivative supply and demand. I've, I've written about it, you know, on these Sprott Money articles probably three or four times this year. Whenever this year, at least, price has gotten between 25 and 26. There's been a huge rush of new shorting from the banks. And you look at the commitment of traders report, it spikes. Yeah. And then shortly thereafter, you get this washout and then they cover all those shorts back up. Yeah. So the, my my question for you though, because I've been in interviews that I've been doing, um, I've been trying to you know counsel a little bit about maybe silver will be better next year because I think gold's going to break out and we can talk about that next. But if gold goes to twenty three hundred, you mentioned the gold silver ratio. Is the gold silver ratio going to go to a hundred? I mean, almost uh -oh. by osmosis, if silver has to go up, doesn't it? Would it? Be, it's ridiculous that they're produced at what in a ratio of twelve to one or something, something like that. Well, yeah. What's what this 80 to 1 price thing? Yeah. It's so ridiculous. I, it's, and of course, one of the theses be, being advanced, particularly by the Silver Academy, is that because there's so much silver used in the military arena, that and they stopped publishing their silver consumption data in something like 1996, um, that there is a mandate to keep the price of silver down because it's used a lot in missiles and right. rock. Right. And, you know, all sorts of uh, submarines and airplanes and things like that. So, and I think that that's probably true that it, you know, there's a real undersupply of silver here that's being covered up. You know, Ted Butler's covered this in terms of the COMEX and how o oversold it is and how when it breaks, it'll break big. And I yeah. just, he's the guy who studies the COMEX much more than I do, but I think he's for sure onto something there. So gold has recently broken out of all of its trends. Um, you know, whether you look at, you know, 10 year tips, uh, whether you look at uh, real interest rates, you know, here in this chart, you can see the 10 year tips yield. Gold should actually be based on everything that it's said to uh, mimic. It, it should be much, much lower. Um, but it's not. Gold is forging ahead. It's it's breaking everything that it used to follow. The ten year tips, uh, real rates, you know, measured on real rates, gold should be much much lower. Here you got gold ETF holdings crashing, and gold, as it used to follow, should be crashing as well. Gold should be much much lower. But it's not. Gold is forging ahead, uh, hitting new highs. And so the question's got to be asked, is physical, physical demand now breaking the paper markets? The ETFs, the futures, is physical, the demand for physical going to bring about price reality? And uh, I think something similar with silver, the, the physical demand, the supply de demand tailwind behind silver will ultimately 
break the paper markets and push it to all-time highs and beyond all-time highs to triple digits. And you know what? If we see the gold-silver ratio or the, even the mining ratio come close, then maybe Eric Sprott is right. We see that $200 silver or $300 silver if we're going to use the 7 to 1 ratio uh, or even higher if gold is much, much higher. Or, you know, the people finally realize we're, we're at the end. We're, we're in that end game of our, this fiat global debt-based monetary system. And I believe as more and more people wake up to that, the run to real assets, in particular gold and silver, is going to be something to behold. So anyway, that's my opinion. That's my thoughts. And I've done heaps of videos over the last couple of years talking about this. And yeah, everything always takes longer to play out than you expect, both on the upside and on the downside. And just the macro and the fundamentals tells me that there's a big tailwind behind silver. And silver's value compared to gold, compared to every other asset, it is probably the most undervalued commodity that I see. Uh, but then I'm also bullish other metals like platinum, copper long term. I love copper long term. So anyway, what do you guys think? Love to see your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. If you like this video, hit that like button. Really do appreciate it. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you all again on another episode of Finance Uncut. And just a reminder, the information provided in this video is for education and entertainment purposes only. Nothing on this channel constitutes as financial advice. The information in this presentation is no substitute for financial advice, and all investors should seek advice from a licensed financial advisor having regard to your own objectives, financial situation, and needs.